Hi, I'm not going to waste much time, I'm going to get right into it. I made a video talking about the most visible pre-jurors, and now I'm going to talk about the least visible pre-jurors. The lower the number, that means the least visible they are, and the higher the number is, that means the highest of the least visible. At 25 is well from BB14, with an average of 3.19. This one isn't a surprise, despite him being a former pre-juror in one of the longest pre-juries in BB history, and lasting the longest as he was a late pre-juror. Janelle's team was irrelevant throughout the season, since they lacked alliances, and this season was top-heavy pertaining alliances. He isn't boring, but wasn't super entertaining either, and was on a season with three trainees, and wasn't directly involved in anything outside of his last two weeks when he was nominated. 24 is Monet, who has an average of 3.14. I mean, she was only on her season for two weeks, and she was relatively invisible in her first week, while also not having a huge edit in her second week, especially compared to the likes of Rachel, Matt, and Brittany, who were more involved and had bigger edits, so her placement here makes sense. At 23 is BB10's Angie, with an average of 3.11. This one isn't shocking whatsoever. She was the most boring person on her crazy cast, and she wasn't relevant outside of her final week, while being sent home in week 3. All of the craziness that happened during those weeks happened around her, she wasn't involved, and she wasn't the most charismatic, so she was under-edited. There's a faraway tie for 22nd, 21st, 20th, and 19th, with Clay from BB17, Dominique from BB19, Isabella from BB21, and Nicole from BB22, with the average for all of them being 3. I'm going to try and get through them quickly. Clay wasn't a big personality, despite being a drama magnet, so it makes sense that he didn't get a lot of diary rooms, despite being a supporter in the Power Alliance. Dominique was not relevant whatsoever in the narrative outside of her book week, and she was randomly targeted by her own alliance. I wouldn't be shocked if her not being quote-unquote stereotypical played a part into her low visibility. Isabella was someone who got a bit of DRs, but she never really entertained or stood out much, but they did the bare minimum just so they could show her continuous screw-ups, and she wasn't in the majority as much as she thought. I already went into Nicole from BB22, so no need to delve further here. At 18 is Ramses from BB19 with a 2.93 average. He was isolated throughout the entire season, gameplay-wise, and he wasn't a big personality whatsoever. He was actually a very small personality. Due to this, him not getting many diary rooms makes sense. He was nominated in week 2 due to a stupid twist and in week 4 where he was turned into a pawn that was sent home. 17 is the infamous Lawan, who has a 2.88 average. The thing with Luan is that he has a lot of personality. I think his edit was so low is that not only was he not involved in the gameplay dynamics before he sent himself home, but he was on a season with half returnees where they would obviously take a lot of the screen time, and from the newbies. If he was on an all newbie season, I'm pretty sure he would have gotten a lot more visibility. 16 is Whitney from BB23, who has a 2.85 average. She is another one who wasn't relevant until her boot week in week 4, and even then, she didn't give us much to work with, or the production team. Maybe in another cast, she would have thrived more, personality and gameplay-wise, but she just wasn't interesting or involved in BB23. At 15 is Kesa from BB7 with a 2.8 average. I already talked about this iteration of him in a prior recording, so moving on. At 14 is Kemi, with a 2.82 average. In general, Kemi wasn't relevant to her season, or the show, outside of her boot week, and I think they under-edited her as much as possible to hide the controversies that were happening that the other cast members caused. Also, we got on the feeds that production tried to make her act like a stereotypical black woman, which isn't her personality at all, and she refused to do so. At 13 is Nick from BB-8, with a 2.77 average. He was clearly cast to be eye candy and showman's water, so his low visibility relatively makes sense. He never got involved in the game and told the entire cast that he didn't care for it and would go home whenever. 
Nick was only relevant in his final week, where he was being sent home and otherwise got camera time when he was hooking up with Danielle. So there's a two-way tie for 12th and 11th, with two of our most recent first boots in Keisha from BB22 and Travis from BB23, both having a 2.75 average. I already covered Keisha's lack of visibility in another video, but it is interesting that she and Travis are tied here, since they went out first on back-to-back -back seasons. Travis was like the fourth or fifth target or something like that, after HOH, so it would make sense why he didn't get much screen time on the show, since he was also very careless, as well as enthusiastic about the game, since he was a recruit, who never took much interest in the show. At 10th is Jeff from BB17 with a 2.7 average. I always felt like his and Jackie's additions to the cast were awkward at best and I don't really get why they did it. In general, Jeff wasn't relevant at all until his final week in the house and even when he was getting booted, not a lot of it was told throughout his perspective. He came off like a car salesman in his confessionals, so I see why they didn't go out of their way to show him more. At 9 is Bailey from BB22 with a 2.63 average. I already covered her, so I'm not going to get into her here. At number 8 is Caitlyn from BB15 with a 2.54 average. Just from going over Caitlyn's time in the BB house, this makes sense. She was never in any real power during the season, and whenever there was something going on in her alliance, the show always went to Erin and Gina Marie. She was overshadowed by almost everyone in the cast and everyone she was aligned to, so she would get less than the others. At number 7 is Amber from BB16 with a 2.53 average. For some reason, I am actually shocked that she was so under the radar slash invisible in the edit. I guess because it was a male-centric season and her only story arc involved Caleb's unrequited crush on her, but they let everyone else narrate it but her. Just judging from what we saw on this season, and on two seasons of the challenge, narration isn't her strong suit, so maybe it was for the better. At 6 is Jacob from BB9 with a 2.5 average. Nothing really too shocking or really notable about this placement. Jacob was only in about two episodes, and we saw how he sent himself home, targeting the pair with power and not even fessing up to anything. Fitting overall. So we have a two-way tie for 5th and 4th place, with Kristen from BB12 and David from BB21, with a 2.38 average. Kristen showed that she had potential to be crazy, and she wasn't poor or really great in diary rooms, but I guess she got a quieter edit because she was overshadowed by the others and was only really relevant for a week. David was a day one boot who didn't get much screen time on his boot episode, but he was in the house for a few weeks. His invisibility in All Stars just shows that he isn't great at narration, but it was interesting that he was less visible compared to the likes of Glenn, Cameron, and even Jody, who are also day one boots. At number three is Rachel from BB20 with a diary room average of two. To be honest, I'm still kind of confused about her invisible edit. I know around this time, she was invisible right along with Angela and KC, but they benefited from making it further. I don't think she was really bad at diary rooms or narrations, but she just got cut and Tyler got all of the focus in the alliance, with Winston and Brett being secondary as they were kind of messy. In second is Mike from BB8, who has an average of 1.6. Apparently, casting was not expecting him to be as boring as he was in the house, since he didn't come off like that in pre- or post-season interviews. He did keep to himself in the house and didn't have a care about anything, and didn't have any enthusiasm about anything pertaining to the game. So him being the lowest pre juror to actually have a confessional isn't shocking. At number one is Neil from BB9, with a diary room average of zero. He is the only person in BB history to ever have zero diary rooms. I am sure a lot of this has to do with him leaving after a week, but there have been people in that same situation that didn't have zero DRs. Despite that, he didn't seem like he would be interesting anyways. So that is the overall list of the most visible and least visible pre based off 
diary room meetings. This is the overall list for all the pre jars, and it's kind of interesting to see how it turned out. I will be back with something soon, and thank you all for watching.